In this section, we're going to cover the commands within MySQL that permits the administrator or the DBA to update passwords for users who are defined on the system. Thus far, we've covered grant and revoke related commands, the former allowing you to create users on the system either as anonymous accounts or as full super user accounts, especially when using the grant option, and the latter allowing you to not necessarily drop users but to revoke permissions for users on the system maintaining the user accounts database. But how about if you just want to perform basic administrative tasks such as changing passwords on a regular basis or even one-off? Well, there are a few ways you can update the passwords for users on the system, and we're going to show you how you can do it. Let's open a shell. We'll launch the most recently run instance of gedit using a shebang gedit. This will call gedit from the history that's stored by the bash shell. And we'll label this section as a new task password management using the shell slash terminal monitor interface. So our task is to simply be able to update passwords for predefined users. Well, first we need to know who are the predefined users on the system. And in order to do so, we need to connect to MySQL either in batch mode or interactive mode, preferably in interactive mode, although we could run the query in batch mode, which would return the list of users quite easily. Let's clear screen and we will launch MySQL. If you want to run MySQL in batch mode, simply specify the credentials such as who to connect as, such as the user root, the default is localhost, we want to be prompted for a password, and then use the E option, followed by double single quotes, and in between the double single quotes we'll specify the command that we'd like to run, such as a select statement from the MySQL database. We'll use a select user comma host these are the two interesting fields as well as password if necessary but the two fields that are required when updating passwords include user and host we need to know which user and which host because MySQL relies upon user and host when determining one user from or distinguishing one user from another so we'll select user host password from mysql.user. Again, it's good practice when using key statements to capitalize them, but it isn't required and MySQL's syntax generally is not case sensitive, although table names and database names on the file system within a Unix or Linux space are, the commands that are issued using any of the MySQL commands are not. MySQL interprets those commands directly and since the commands are generally unique, there is no need to be concerned about case sensitivity. So that's really the reason why commands are not case sensitive. But generally speaking, it's a good idea to capitalize commands such as select so that you can easily distinguish between the commands. We want user host password and another key statement is from mysql.user and this will be returned to our screen momentarily. So let's attempt to connect. We'll need to specify the correct password and there are the two accounts that are defined. Now currently root's password is abc123. We can confirm that it is by simply appending without any spaces between the p and the password, the password abc123. When we re-execute this query, we're no longer prompted for a password, but simply the results are returned, indicating to us that the password for root is certainly abc123. So first let's begin by changing root's password or by changing the default user's password. So task number one, change root's password. And again, this is root within the MySQL space or within the DBMS, not within the Linux or Unix file system. So don't correlate the two by any means. So we'll change root's password and we'll need to change root's password twice. So change root's password or change both root account passwords. So change both root account passwords since there are two root accounts. In order to do so, we'll show you one of the few ways you can. First and foremost, the user who is going to update the passwords must have update privileges to the mysql.user table. So let's make that note. Note DBA, and this should go without saying, but just so that you know the technicality or the privilege that's required, DBA must have 
update privilege to mysql.user table. So in the event that you grant almost full privileges to users within your environment who may assume the responsibility of managing users, be sure that you grant the user who is or user or users who are responsible for updating passwords the update privilege on the mysql.user table. Otherwise, the DBA or temp DBA or junior DBA will be unable to update passwords. So, back to what we're doing here. We're going to log in using interactive mode rather than batch mode. The user's root and currently the password is abc123 which will con connect us to the dbms mysql. So now that we're in, a select current user is always a default that we like to run to be sure that we are connected as who we think we are. And in order to update a password for the default user who's logged in currently, we can use either set password for the default user or we can use an update statement. So the two common ways of updating passwords equal the following. So note two common ways to update passwords using the terminal monitor. One, and we'll just indent this, use set password statement. And two, execute and we'll put it in between single quotes update query against the mysql.user table. So you can either run set password or run an update query directly against the mysql.user table. Both methods actually operate on the same mysql.user table. So either way you do it is fine. However, if you simply want to update your own password, simply execute set logged in as the user who you intend to update, set password and set it equal to the password function which takes care of the hashing that's necessary to generate the 41 character hash that you see here which is why we selected the password to begin with so set password equal to password and in between parentheses and also in between single quotes and of course the line must be terminated by a semicolon will specify the password the new password let's go from ABC123 to XYZ123 and when you execute a straight set password this changes the password for the currently logged in user again this assumes that the user has the update privilege to the MySQL dot user table or at least for the own users record so we want to change the account for root and one method includes executing set password at while logged in as the user root let's execute this command and see if it updates so far it's been updated and we can rerun a select of the user host and password from the table to see what's changed so let's select user host password from mysql.user and we'll just quickly compare and contrast the strings that were defined to the strings that are now defined. Notice that by updating using the set password feature, only one password of the two accounts were updated, was updated. And that's the password which corresponds to the root at local host account. So we have not updated the password for root at Linux CBT DB1. This is simply a separate account. Keep that in mind. We can tell because the 41 character string differs for root at localhost from the last time we ran the command. The last time we ran the command, both strings were identical because both pa passwords were identical. Now passwords have been changed, or the password for root at localhost has been changed, so the strings no longer match. Let's exit the current session and attempt to connect using the old password of ABC123 to see if it permits us, and it fails. So notice we're unable to connect. However, if we switch to XYZ123, we'll be permitted access into the DB, and we can rerun the select statement, and you'll see that the nothing's changed with the table. So we've updated the password for the currently logged in user. Now we need to move on to updating other passwords. How do we go about, for example, updating the password using an update statement? 
Let's say we wanted to update the password for root at Linux CBT DB1. Rather than using a straight set password, which impacts the currently logged in user, which is why we ran select current user, just to be clear as to who we're currently logged in as. When you run set password the way we recently did, which is simply set password without specifying a user, it always impacts the currently logged in user's password, which is what happened, as you can see by the 41-bit different string. So how do we update passwords for other users? Well, there is another user, root at Linux CBT DB1. So we want to change the second user's password, and in order to do so, we'll run an update statement, which resembles the following. If we're out of the context of MySQL, the database itself, we'll simply execute update MySQL, which is the name of the DB, dot user, and we will then execute the same set password command that you see here, so we'll just copy it. So nothing much has changed other than we're using an update rather than set password directly, which operates on a currently logged in user. So we'll set password equal to whatever we want it to be equal to, but we're not done yet. We need to set a clause, and in this case, we need to specify where because the update command expects where to be able to distinguish between the rows that are in the table. The row currently, or the rows, there are currently two rows in the user table, but there could be 200 rows, or 2,000 rows, or 2 million rows. So the where clause allows update to pinpoint exactly which row is of interest. Now we need to define the clause. It's quite easy. We'll say simply where user is equal to, just like when defining the user in the first place, root at, and we'll take this to the next line, Linux CBT DB1 and hosts we need to match two fields as we've mentioned and hosts is equal to in this case Linux CBT DB1 so let's just get that it's root at or root and we don't need the at here so it's where user is equal to root and host is equal to Linux CBT DB1 because this update statement is simply going to match first the user root from column number one user second the host Linux CBT DB1 from the second column host so in this case we'll just simply say host equals Linux CBT DB1 and when it's all said and done we should also indicate that we want to flush the privileges but we'll refrain from flushing privileges for now just to show you the effects of not flushing the privileges Let's copy this command over, and before running it, let's rerun the select statement just to verify that the passwords are different. These are two different 41-bit strings. Let's paste. Here's our command, update mysql.user, set password equals xyz123. We've passed the password into the password function so that it generates the hash, where user equals root, and host equals Linux CBT db one Let's give this a run rows matched one one row changed so that means if we reran the select statement we should see that both strings are identical and they are feb884 and it terminates with 2f2 so now they're both identical however what if we attempted to connect using the new password xyz123 for the user like cbtdb1 would it work it wouldn't because the privileges have not been flushed so ideally after executing any sort of update against the MySQL grant state grant tables that is we should flush the privileges because as we've mentioned let's actually use MySQL just to recap and then select show tables that is as we've mentioned the grant tables which include DB columns priv host prox priv tables priv and user are cached in memory even if they contain millions of records they're generally with today's powerful systems and capable systems is enough memory to cache or to store in memory all of the accounts passwords and hosts so as a result MySQL is still up and running with the old information which says root at Linux CBT DB1 has a password of ABC123 rather than XYZ123 of course it's represented via its hash but nonetheless it equates to ABC123 this is why we want to execute flush privileges because it commits to memory the new information and now when we attempt to connect it works for example 
we reran or we ran set password for ourselves, changing the password to XYZ123. But the set password command or set password statement that is executes the flush privileges. How about executing an update MySQL user for the local host? So for example, we'll go ahead and run that update command again, but this time for the local user. Instead of root at Linux CBTDB1, let's go ahead with root at localhost. We're differentiating between root and lo at localhost and root at Linux CBTDB1 in a way which communicates that generally speaking when connecting to the MySQL instance, the client MySQL will, will submit more likely than not the username root at localhost rather than root at Linux CBTDB1. So there is a difference between the two accounts, but in the event, the rare event that the client submits root at Linux CBTDB1, we would still gain access to the system. So let's update the password, but this time we'll revert to ABC123 from XYZ123. So let's go with ABC123 for root at localhost without flushing privileges. Then let's quit using the escape sequence in an attempt to connect to the DB again using what was the new password but is now considered to be an old password of XYZ123. And notice we're still able to connect using XYZ123 and that's because the privileges have not been flushed. We are logged in as the super user. Select current user reveals as such. And we can quit reconnect as long as we want until MySQL flushes its privileges. So ideally we want to log in once and we'll send a command which will flush the privileges. Let's do that. We'll simply execute flush privileges semicolon. The privileges have been flushed. We can always confirm whether or not the client command ran successfully by echoing the shell's exit status. A zero value means good, a non-zero value indicates trouble or some sort of error condition. Super. Now let's attempt to connect using the old XYZ password. Notice it fails because the flush privileges generally is required after some sort of update statement to any of the grant tables. Let's now attempt to connect using ABC123 and you'll see that it works. Super. So flush privileges definitely works after running an update statement, but when you execute the set password statement, it takes care of flushing the privileges for us. So we've updated the password for the local user. And of course, if you want to update passwords for other users on the system, you certainly can do so. For example, let's log in, connecting as root, and we'll select user host password from mysql.user, and you'll see that there are only two users. You know that we can create users using the create user statement or by using a grant statement, which will create the user as well as assigning permissions. How about using a create user statement to create what is effectively anonymous or an anonymous user with no privileges to no databases for the sole purpose of changing the password. So we'll create user Linux CBT and end it with semicolon followed by the same select statement select user host password from mysql.user and you'll see that there's now a new user called Linux CBT at any host, but the user doesn't have a password, which means we can connect from any host, albeit with anonymous privileges. Now, in order to update this user's password, we simply execute the update statement that we previously ran and then flush the privileges. It's important. So let's confirm that running the update privilege or the update statement to change the password for this particular non-privileged user actually works and then requires a flush privileges to take effect. So let's find update in our history rather than typing it in again. We'll update MySQL set password to let's say ABC123 that'll suffice where user equals Linux CBT and host equals percent. That'll get the user that we're interested in. The password has been updated. Let's rerun our select statement which is somewhere in the history as well. Now the user has a password of ABC123. However, what happens if a user attempts to connect from the local or remote system as the user Linux CBT? In a separate shell, let's confirm that, just to clarify. We haven't flushed privileges, so let's MySQL user Linux CBT to connect to the local system. Notice we're in without being prompted for a password. 
a select current user reveals that we're in as the user Linux CBT at any host, but we were not prompted for a password. Let's quit. And then from the first shell, let's execute flush privileges and then attempt from the second shell to connect again as the user Linux CBT without specifying a password. And as you can see, it's failed. So we'll be forced to specify dash P followed by ABC123 or to have it prompt us. But now we're able to connect and now all is well. So this simply drives home the point that after you've executed update statements, against any of the grant tables you're to definitely execute a flush privileges to cause MySQL, the daemon that is, to reread into memory the new passwords. Super. Next we're going to take a look at show commands that are important for ascertaining the status of the MySQL server, the various engines that are supported, how to identify process lists, and the like.